Today will be a short review of the Westcott FJ200 that is held on my hand here. I mean, there is two copies. I'd like to thank SR Revolution and Shristi Digilife in Singapore, the distributor for Westcott, for loaning me this copy of the flash itself. Now, I have used this flash for four photo shoots and I'd like to show you some of the photos here. This is shot with my GFX100 with high speed sync and with my X2D using standard leaf shutter sync itself. Overall, I do enjoy using this flash out in the field, but before I go into my field experience, let's talk a little bit on measurements. And measurements are really really important because that will help you make I guess your base decision on which flash system to buy out in the field. Now this is the Westcott FJ200 and nearest competitor is the Godox AD300. Both of these are bare bulb flashes so you'll probably use them in the same way. They are built slightly different as you can see here and this is slightly elongated and this is slightly round and short, slightly wider too. And uh, it depends on how you use it. I mean, it's a personal preference which kind of size you want. I believe if you are using something like a sling bag, this is not so great. But if you're using a drag bag or uh, I would say as a backpack, I think the longer tube flashes like this does fit in the bag quite nicely. Now in terms of weight for both of these systems, they are about the same. I hold my hand, feels not much difference. Even though this is written as AD300 and this is FJ200, the weight wise, very, very similar to me. Now, in terms of power output, I did measure. I used the Seconic C700 here, and of course the Seconic L858D, and I did measure some of the power here. And I would say as the FJ200 power is very similar to the AD300, slightly less than one third the power difference. Now, this is 200 watt and this is 300 watt, and that is expected, but this is slightly lesser than 50%, as even though the numbers suggest as such. Now, when it comes to the flash duration itself, however, the FJ200 has a way better flash duration. 50% uh, improvement in flash duration at max power. 1 over 350 plus, and this is 1 over 200 plus. So, if you are into some sort of action photography, I guess at full power, the Westcott is slightly better itself. Now, in terms of flash color itself, flash does have color just like any LED lights. And for the Westcott, it is measured at about 5,500 and below, while the AD300 measures at 6,000. So why does it matter? It's because this 500 over Kelvin difference means that this light is significantly warmer than the AD300. In fact, let me show you some photos here. And you can see the warmness difference between the lights. Does it matter to you? It depends if you use it out in the field in daylight. What will happen is that this will give you a slightly warmer cast on your skin tones while this will give you a slightly cooler cast on your skin tone. So it depends on which you prefer. The FJ200 is also slightly more color accurate. It has a higher CRI. Plus, it has no tinting, while the AD300 has a slight tint and of course, uh, a lower CRI. But it is insignificant, let me tell you. In real world, in the field, it is insignificant. The bigger significance is the color temperature of 6000 and 5005, 5005 being this. I did try to lower the power of the flash from full power to half power to one eight, the one quarter and one eight, and I tried, you know, with this flash, and you can see uh, the color temperature continues to fall at about five thousand five, five thousand three, five thousand two. So this flash inherently is a warm colored flash. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It depends on how you use it, but just know that as you lower the power, it does drop in terms of its color temperature to get a slightly, slightly warmer tone compared to at full power itself. Other than that, I don't really have much other you know, measurements to show you. I just want to show you with the AD300 because flash numbers are hard to decipher. 200 watt in a system is not the same as 200 watt in another system. And in this case, 200 watt here, I would guess in the Godox system will be something like 250 watt because that's kind of the outcome that you get in measurements now. Now let's talk about how I use it in the field. The FJ200 of course is just a flash and you need to use it with the commander here. This is the FJX2M flash trigger itself. And this trigger is really, really cool. In fact, let me show you some close-ups here. Firstly, you can use with any camera system. You can notice that you know Canon, Nikon, Sony, or you can use on a single trigger. Though with the Sony, you have to use with adapter itself. And then with uh, the single trigger itself, you can control multiple groups of flash just like you get in the Godox system. Now, the other thing cool about this flash is that it has a hot shoe that can bend. Let me show you. You can bend the hot shoe itself. 
So in my use case, I use this trigger in Nikon mode for my X2D and in my GFX, I use it in Fujifilm mode. You will have a blinking light that will show you that this camera is in sync with the flash trigger itself. So pretty much it tells you that you are connected properly. This is actually really good. I mean, sometimes you do not know whether your flash is sitting properly. Well, in Westcott, they at least tell you that it is sitting properly on the camera by showing this particular LED light blinking itself. Now, this trigger has only one issue and that is that the center control wheel is a little bit too wonky. I don't know how to say. don't know whether is this a problem only with this unit here. But going down and up by one click doesn't actually change one click. Sometimes it changes one click, sometimes it changes two click. Um, I mean, this unpredictability does sometimes drive you a little bit crazy in the field itself. And that it is a really good trigger. You just have to buy one trigger to be utilized over all your camera systems. And there's one more thing. This trigger is an uh, internal charge uh, trigger itself. So you can just use USB-C and charge this trigger up. I mean, uh, some people do prefer disposable batteries because you can just buy and put it. But these days, everybody have a power bank. You just have to charge the trigger with the power bank and you are done. So that is a nice touch. I mean, internal lithium-ion batteries does last longer than AA batteries itself. Now, in the field itself, utilizing this flash, I shot it through umbrella. I shot it through, I guess, a direct reflector like this one here. And I got quite nice photos. I mean, you saw it just now. But let me go through some of the various photos and I'll talk about how I use this flash. One of them is to shoot this particular shot of Shen He here. And this particular shot, I shot it with the reflector directly. And at about a quarter or one eighth of power, I could par the sun in bright daylight using the X2D. Now, of course, the X2D is a leaf shutter camera, so I don't think it is the power of the Westcott that you must say is great. <laughs> I mean, it is a 200 watt flash, but you know, it's probably not the biggest contributing factor to why you can par the sun in outdoors. Next, I used the GFX 100 and I shot in the daytime under a sheltered, half sunny, half sheltered condition. Uh, this is Togemesh and you can see that these shots are pretty nice. I mean, I used the FJ200 with umbrella there. And I also did in the sheltered region and I actually used the FJ200 here as a fixed sun. And the nice thing is I didn't measure at that point in time. The FJ200 is actually a warmer light. So it actually gives you a nice, uh, a little bit of, uh, I guess, sun, sunset-ish light, which is pretty cool. It's slightly warmer than the rest. And today's measurement just kind of tell me that this light it is warmer than normal. Then I also used it in another shot here, this is a cyberpunk inspired shoot. I use two flashes here, one with a softbox and the other one with the umbrella. You can see in this shot here. And I did get the shots I want. And this particular shoot here, I was using the X2D. Overall, I think the outcome from all the shots here is expected of a flash system. I do have to say here that in the field, the flash system is relatively reliable. At least it feels more reliable than a Godox system. Uh, I did not have a single missed shots in those uh, shoot itself. Unlike in the Godox system, I tend to have one or two missed shot for every shoot itself. I'm not really sure whether is it the trigger is better, the flash is better, but it tends to be slightly more reliable. I mean, this is in comparison, of course, with the Godox X Pro 1 trigger. I know Godox just came out with the X Pro 2 trigger, which is bigger and maybe more powerful. Yet to test it, so at least with the X Pro 1 trigger, you know, compared to the Westcott triggering system, I think the Westcott is slightly more reliable. At least that's how I feel about it in the field itself. Overall, I think this Westcott system is pretty much a good deal. I mean, even though it's rated at 200 watt, it is very close to the AD300. So the difference between this and the AD300 is just a marginal difference in terms of light power. In terms of price, this is cheaper in Singapore. I believe it's 100 plus cheaper in Singapore. This is less than 500, I believe. And the AD300 should be in the realm of 600 plus. So it is 100 plus cheaper. And you only get like, what, 0 0.2 difference or 0 0.3 difference in power. So maybe that doesn't matter too much. And this is a good deal if you consider that aspect of things. I'm not really sure worldwide price because it tends to vary area by area. But let me show you some of the price that I found for the FJ200 versus the AD300. So maybe that matters to you. It depends on your personal preference itself. If you are using multiple systems, like say Olympus with Fuji, or Fuji with Canon, Nikon with Fuji, Canon with Olympus, Canon with Panasonic, I think this 
is a relatively good deal because you can just use one controller to just you know swap between the settings and then utilize it on multiple systems itself this is fantastic really you don't need to forget about bringing the right controller the last thing you want is to bring your olympus controller when you're using your canon system and i did it before it's quite irritating i enjoy this system a lot and um, i will recommend it if you have not purchased any system before as with camera flashes today are a system considering the mount considering the trigger you know considering the batteries you probably want to buy the same system throughout your lifetime unless you have money to spare and just throw away your old system and buy a new one in this case i will say as if you do not own any system do consider the west coast system because it works out pretty well and it has a really nice controller system itself but if not, just use whatever system that is available. Now the West Court here uses a proprietary West Court mount, but that said, if you want to use Bowen mount, you can just buy the S uh, bracket, like the Godox AD300, and then you can utilize it with almost any Bowen mount modifier. But if not, the West Court mount is pretty nice. I show you some behind the scenes shots with the West Court softbox itself. I would say the softbox is better than the Godox softbox. It is easier to use and better to use. And not only that, you can actually put a disc in front to actually remove all your hotspots at a cost of some power but overall it is a very very nice softbox and you know there's really no complaints using the west coast system even if you're using just the native mount itself and that's about for today i hope you enjoyed this short little review of the fj200 from west coast and i'll see you next time bye bye